Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to start things off with a little bit of a report regarding the Ryzen 9 3950X. So you may recall that quite recently the Ryzen 9 3950X, which of course is their 16 core CPU, was delayed. And it was initially supposed to come out this month. It's now going to come out in November, which contrary to what I said in my initial video, is not actually next month. Apologies for the brain fart on my um, part there. But regardless, we now have a bit of an update to this thanks to a report from PCGamesN.com. And you of course can find a link to their article in the description below this video. So according to their report, sources close to uh, what's actually going on at AMD, have basically said that the Ryzen 9 3950X was delayed due to, quote, unsatisfactory clock speeds. Now, at the time, I did speculate on what the cause of this could actually be, and I posed that it was most likely tied to those production issues that um, TSMC were ha having excuse me, with the 7nm process and of course a and &E themselves mentioned in the slide they released at the time that the delay was due to quote unquote strong demand but at least according to the source for this report while that was undoubtedly a factor that contributed to the delay apparently it is due to those unfat satisfactory clock speeds from the full stack of CCX chips which are required to give us the full 16 core horsepower of the Ryzen 9 3950X. Now obviously AMD only wants the best of the best when it comes to the binning for the CCXs when it comes to what they have to put on for the 3950X. They have to reach that coveted 4.7 gigahertz that they have been pushing a lot for this particular process. Obviously if it, if it misses that by a wide margin or whatever, then obviously it's not good enough to be in the 3950X. So it kind of makes sense that this would kind of go hand in hand with the production issues that TSMC have reported and the quote unquote strong demand that AMD themselves mentioned in the initial reveal that we would be seeing a delay to the Ryzen 9 3950X. Now, obviously, these are just rumors in my Obviously, we, we, we don't know exactly what is going on over at Camp AMD. You know, this could be completely accurate. It could be part of the reason. Maybe it's of this, plus the TSMC issues, plus other issues. You know, maybe a flamingo broke into the factory and, and ruined a bunch of stock. I'm just saying, we don't actually know what is actually going on. Um, I did kind of speculate that the production issues are most likely the cause, simply because the fairly short delay, obviously, it, it is, September is, is basically finished, um, so but we don't know when in November it's coming out, so in theory it could be like a month and a half, two months, or even just a month, we, we just don't know. So it, perhaps AMD are just hoping that TSMC's issues have worked out. Obviously, obviously, they have a direct line to TSMC. Maybe they've said, okay, we, we, you know, we're going to get these issues sorted. We should have enough stock for you by X point. And AMD have just kind of given them the time to give them what they actually need to basically prepare for the launch of 3950X. That would actually make perfect sense. But it, again, AMD have only mentioned the production issues. Obviously, they wouldn't mention any clock speed issues or anything like that. But still, just take this as a pinch of salt is all I'm saying. So next up we've got quite a bit to get through from Intel, the first of which is regarding a listing of the Intel X399 chipset. So this was helpfully posted on Twitter by Momomo, whose tweet you can find linked in the description below this video. You should be very familiar with their name by this point if you watch this channel. So what we have is a couple of links to a mirror of a page that was posted on uh, intel.com. And the actual page is rather lengthy, but we want to focus on a bit fairly near the top where it lists the Intel 300-240 chipset family. So we have a few uh, boards here listed, but the one that we are interested in is, of course, X399, the HGTD high-end desktop motherboard, which, of course, would be for Cascade Lake. And this actually ties into something that I want to kind of skip to now, which is some benchmarks on Geekbench uh, for Cascade Lake. And these are also thanks to, you guessed it, Momomo. So let's talk about the first one. So the first one, as you can see, uh, if you scroll down a little bit um, on the link in the description, or it's on screen for your perusal, 
This one is a 12 core 24 thread part and we see a 2.77 gigahertz base frequency and a max frequency of 3.8. And of course, what we're very interested in here as well is the score. So single core score is at 5339 and the multi-core score is 44,046, so 44046. But I mentioned that there's a second listing, didn't I? Yes, I did indeed. And this one is for a 14 core 28 thread part, again for Cascade Lake. And this is going to be 2.87 gigahertz base and 4.18 gigahertz boost. And as for the score, we see a single core score of 5,411, so 5411, and a multi core score of 46,425 or 46425 to say it a little bit more clearer. So you might wonder a couple of questions when it comes to putting those benchmarks and a little bit of context. The first of which is how does it do versus Skylake X, um, which obviously is kind of what it's kind of replacing. And I've just pulled up a benchmark from Geekbench of the i7-7820X and we see a uh, score, single core score, sorry, should I say, of 1146 and a multi-core score of 8963. But there's also another question. What about the leaked benchmarks for Threadripper? And just solely sticking to the Geekbench 4 results, which is only fair given that the Cascade Lake benchmarks were in that as well, we see a single core score for AMD Shocks Tooth of 1275 and a multi core score of 23015. Again, this is a leaked benchmark but still worth bringing up I feel. Now obviously the Threadripper 3000 leaked benchmark that I just mentioned does prove that it has a significant uh, multiple performance increase versus the 2990WX and obviously it has a, a much different core configuration to what we see from both of the Intel offerings. We see 32 cores, 64 threads, but at least in this one benchmark, um, Cascade Lake X does seem to be in the lead in this regard. But obviously this is just one benchmark, one leak test, so let's just wait and see what's going on when it comes to how AMD and Intel are going to go head to head in the HEDT -E market. So we're going to finish things up with a little spot of Microsoft slash AMD news regarding the Surface Laptop 3. So you may recall some time ago there was rumblings doing the rounds on the internet that we would be seeing an AMD Ryzen processor finding its home within the Surface Laptop 3. But now we have a new report thanks to the German website Win Future, and of course you can find their uh, link in the description below this video. But according to their report, we're going to be seeing an 8-core CPU um, inside this particular laptop. Now that is especially interesting, and you might raise an eyebrow and go, why? Because, well, 8-core CPUs are obviously, you know, they're, they're kind of the norm amongst the desktop. But not really the case when it comes to mobile. None of AMD's currently available mo mobile processors offer 8 cores, unlike what we they have for the desktop. So what does this mean? Well, the most reasonable possibility is that AMD have been working on a new um, CPU that has these 8 cores for mobile that is actually going to make its market debut in the Surface Laptop 3. And of course I do mean a Ryzen 3000 part, it wouldn't really make much sense for them to regress and obviously they're definitely not going to be doing something new outside of that generation just yet. I mean obviously Ryzen 3000 just came out so you know, it'd be kind of crazy to even suggest that but I think it is fairly reasonable to expect that we are going to be seeing a brand new mobile part from AMD in this Surface Laptop 3 and of course well, I'm sure we'll see it in other products as well. So I'd be really curious to see what actually happens here because according to the previous reports from Winner Future, as they were the ones who discussed this before, we're going to be seeing Ryzen 5 3500U or Ryzen 7 3750U. Now, they did say that these laptops are going to begin at quad-core, and both of those CPUs that I just mentioned are quad-core, but they are going to go all the way up to an 8-core model as well. So we're going to have to just wait and see, unfortunately, how accurate this ends up being. Obviously, when Microsoft officially announces what's going on with the specifications of the Surface Laptop 3, we will see just exactly how accurate these reports are. Microsoft has an event coming in October, so we can expect to learn exactly what's going on here 
quite soon and it could be that AMD are fleshing out the mobile side of things as well because they have been very focused quite rightly so on the desktop first so could be an interesting future for Ryzen based laptops which we'll have to see but that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching as always your support is highly appreciated and I'll see you next time bye bye